Just as he turned to look, he saw the orange and black blur of fur rushing right at him. Today's story takes us to Sapura National Park, a tiger reserve located in the Hoshangabad district of Pradesh in India. With its rugged terrain, sandstone peaks, gorgeous ravines, and forests, the mix of terrain and biodiversity makes the park a truly remarkable spot for tourists, drawing thousands of visitors each year. Those who wish to experience India in style would be in for a treat if they chose this park. However, for one lone hiker, he would get a little too close to the wildlife and would realize that the big cats of India are not to be trifled with. Joseph M. Fone was a Malawian native who spent his time traveling around the world, looking for the best spots and sites for his travel blog. He believed himself to have a private connection with nature and found that a lot of animals took a strange liking to him. His most popular story was when he had met with a wild cobra and managed to get the creature to leave him alone by singing to it. His latest location was Satpura National Park. He had come to see the elephants in hopes that he would connect with them. Once he arrived at the park, Joseph spent a few hours talking with a local park guide, learning what he could see and do. While he didn't need guides for when he went out into strange lands, he did his homework and made sure he knew what he was walking into. After learning everything he could about the park, he found a hotel and planned his route the next day before heading off to bed for the night. By dawn, he headed out, taking one of the more popular trails. He knew that during the day, the path would be filled with tourists, so he left early to beat the rush. After half an hour of hiking, he found the elephants. They were all in a corner where they had spent the night staying close to a small pond. From a distance, Joseph watched with keen interest. He spotted some of the small calves with their mothers. They trotted around, spraying each other with water from the pond, which they rushed into, took up water with their trunks, and then sprayed up in the air. Joseph was tempted to get closer, but he knew that wouldn't be the best move. Mothers were protective of their children, and if one elephant charged him, the entire herd would come after him. So he watched them from a distance, taking photos and making videos, which he would later use for his blog. Two and a half hours later, he left them and continued making his way deeper into the reserve. As he moved through the trees, he saw flying squirrels moving from tree to tree as he hiked down the path, disturbing the creatures. From a distance, a spotted deer turned and made eye contact with him before turning back to run off. Joseph took a drink of his water as he realized he had come to the far end of the trail and was now venturing into parts of the park which were rarely visited by tourists. He had gone off the trails and was looking for what else he could find. A hornbill flew overhead, going so low that he could feel the wind from the wings of the bird on his hair. He smiled up at it as it flew away. He walked out to the top of a hill and took in a wonderful view of the entire reserve. Taking a quick break to pee, he turned back and decided to start heading home, knowing that he had a long trek ahead of him and would most likely get back to the hotel just before sundown. As he walked through the jungle, he heard a sound behind him and turned back. It had been a loud snap, like a twig being broken under heavy weight. Just as he turned to look, he saw the orange and black blur of fur rushing right at him. Joseph reacted quickly and jumped to the side as the tiger missed him by mere inches. The large beast hit the ground and turned instantly. For something which weighed over 500 pounds, it was incredibly nimble and managed to turn on a dime like a small house cat. Joseph took off running, getting a head start on the creature. The tiger had smelled him long ago, a smell which it was familiar with it had seen humans before. Several of them walked the path and sometimes they would see the tiger as well. But this human had walked into the tiger's territory and marked it. Joseph had marked the tiger's territory as his own. 
and the beast was not going down without a fight. It was going to take down the man who believed he could take what the animal owned. He heard the sound of the beast catching up to him from behind. Thinking fast, he leapt to the side of the ravine and dropped off it, rolling down the slope with his limbs bouncing off rocks and dirt. A finger snapped as he landed on it, and Joseph yelled out in pain as he assessed the damage. The tiger followed, slowed by the ravine, but roaring above him as it rushed down to feast on its prey. Joseph considered putting his bag above his head and using some branches to make himself look bigger than the creature and confuse it a little, but then he realized that the tiger wasn't hunting. It was defending, and regardless of what the target looked like, it was going to defend its home with all vigor. He turned and spotted a group of trees and rushed towards them, leaping over a fallen branch and towards the tree just as the tiger reached the bottom of the ravine. Joseph got one leg over the side of the lowest branch and began pulling himself up to the tree. The tiger leapt into the air and took a swipe with his claws, catching it across the back of his leg. The blow left three deep cuts across the back of Joseph's leg, and he let out a deep cry as the tiger landed on the other side of the tree, staring up at him and growling menacingly. He managed to pull himself up into the tree, looking down at his leg that had been slashed by the tiger. The branch and his trousers were quickly soaked in blood, and he realized that he was now losing blood quickly. There would only be a few minutes before he would go in the shock from blood loss. He had to get to the hospital near the hotel. But the tiger circled the tree from below, staring up at him in a way that almost seemed like the proud creature was daring him to come down and finish what they had started. Joseph groaned in pain as he realized that he had also gotten a cut across the back as he rolled down the ravine, and that was bleeding as well. He had very few options, but one thing he knew was that going down there with the tiger would mean certain death. He turned to look up to see if there were any other high branches he could get on, and just as he did, he heard the sound of something creaking. He looked down at the branch just as it snapped under his weight and Joseph found himself on the ground. The traveler looked up to see the tiger walking toward him. He tried to get back to his feet, but his injured leg gave out on him. Joseph dropped to the ground and began crawling backwards, dragging himself by his elbows as the large beast walked up to him, baring his large teeth in a fit of rage. He raised his elbows in one last feat of defiance, but the tiger pounced, ripping the arm out of its socket in one swift motion, and then driving its large jaws at the neck of the man, biting through and breaking his neck instantly. Tigers are not friendly creatures, and anyone who dares to approach them risks suffering the same fate as Joseph.